we just uh, recently did a poll at the end of April uh, about uh, with the general public about COVID-19. And, you know, we asked them about their behaviors when things returned to normal. We asked them about uh, how enjoyable it was to be at home. We asked them the differences between if the, are they more fearful right now of the pandemic or are they more fearful of the loss of jobs and loss of economic um, uh, improvement out there. And quite frankly, at the end of April, we found that 70% of Oklahomans um, are still fearful of COVID. Uh, they're still much more moved by that. And uh, again, but I think that's a one point in time. I think if I did it today, I'd find less than 70%. I think in two months, I'd find even less. Uh, being, being in March, I would have probably found it at 90%. Uh, so, you know, that, that is a very fluid motion right now. It's really changing. I think that Oklahomans are very impacted by uh, television, by media. Uh, you know, uh, when we talk, talked earlier about, uh, you know, cyber attacks and infectious diseases and things of that nature, Justin, the thought was, is that if I had asked, you know, what are you more afraid of, let's say, or the biggest issue to you in January, I don't think a pandemic or infectious diseases would have made even the top 10. So uh, public opinion is very influenced by what's going on in the media and uh, people uh, respond to that into polling. And so, uh, you know, in, a, in, in three to six months, we may find something else at the top of the list that's their greatest concern. Uh, but uh, for the most part, I, I would say that, you know, when it comes to the elections, um, everything that's been talked about on this uh, so far is, is heavily influencing that. I do want to just say one other thing, Justin. Sure. That was, is that what I thought was great about the presentation earlier was it was talking a lot, you know, what uh, Mr. Neiman talked about was very complex. And that level of complexity is for security measures that like even Paul Zerix talked about that we're doing here in Oklahoma. But at the same time, we have to balance that with ballot access. Hmm. Uh, we have both parties, I think, saying that it is harder to get to the ballot if we have these security measures. At the same time, if we remove the security measures, we then even feed into what's one of the problems, which is uh, that there is an undermining of the election outcome. Was the election really uh, a truly of the voters uh, because we removed safety features and perhaps there was some fraudulent activity. Mm -hmm. So again, this is the real issue, not just in Oklahoma, but nationwide. We're having to balance those two. Uh, if I go into the public and I ask them, do you think that we ought to have absentee ballots, uh, mail-in ballots because of COVID? They're going to say yes. But how much do they know about those security measures? How much do they know about that's a, a, um, protecting elections uh, in Oklahoma? And, and I would probably find they don't know that much about it. So um, that's, that's the struggle with public opinion and listening to the public and, and, and having to work through some of these issues. Um, in 2014, the amount of absentee ballots I believe was only about 12% of the population. Every two years since then, the number of absentee ballots has been doubling in the state of Oklahoma. And it's having an impact on elections. Uh, if you look at the turnout for CD5, which is currently uh, Congresswoman Horn, she lost on election day votes, but she won the election because she had more absentee, she won on, among the absentee and early votes uh, and beat uh, Steve Russell uh, there and ended up winning the election by a half a percent. So uh, absentee balloting is growing in Oklahoma. Uh, it is still one of the most restrictive states, meaning that it still requires a notary public, uh, mm -hmm. which, but that's one of the safety features uh, at this point that's making sure that those ballots that are winning for Kendra Horn are legitimate votes, are legitimate ballots. So uh, again, Oklahoma, we have a very strict system, but at the same time, we're seeing absentee voting growing. Uh, and at the same time, it's having a, an impact on elections here in the state. 